Uh, Scarlatti, I'm reviving from my high school years when I was studying during the time of the New York City High School of Performing Arts, and my new teacher at the time was Lillian Frenlich. And she gave me this um, volume, of first volume of Scarlatti. It's first skin edition, and I have it today, and I think I learned five of them from this. And the third one was the one I'm reviving now. And it's interesting because it's in 12 eighth time, but I don't even count in 12. I, I kind of feel long groups of notes. There's lots of broken arpeggios, broken chords. I should say broken chords, which are arpeggios. And there are little springboards into them. Uh, and also springboards just into triads as well. Now, when he starts, he starts with a three note triplet into a descending G major arpeggio. And there's a swell into a the top note, the root. So you have to get that. I'm going to play it slow first. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, the wrist forward, wrist forward. Okay, my wrist is going forward. And up, 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 up. This is piano, by the way. It's, fort, it's mezzo forte on the top note, and then it trickles down into piano. You could first practice legato to get the arm weight distribution that you want to go there, and then you drag it down. If you want a lot of bite in those staccato notes, or a lot of spring um, rebound effect, you might want to do one, two, three, five, is whatever works better for you. So the four, four works pretty good. Um, so you get that sense of the legato for the the shape of, of it coming down and the traction, and as opposed to playing up and down. And then you snip out that legato. For Z, Idea, which is for three sixteenth notes and then 30 seconds at the end of that going, springboarding into um, a triad, in this case a diminished chord, and then sequences, and steps, and steps, and then less, less, least. It's nice to bring them down because they're sequences. The left hand at the same time is going down. And when you get to that juncture, a very tricky place. Because right here we have a trill against a a dominant uh, broken chord, which would be the D major chord. In G major, your dominant is D of sharp A. So, yup, 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 It's really going dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant. And they both share the dominant of G major and the to uh, tonic of G major share a common tone, which is the D. dominant, it would be the fifth of the tonic, but they share that D. So that's why it keeps going down to that D, but you do know by the broken chord that you're outlining with the dominant and the tonic. Yep. I try to keep free on that, this one, wrist forward. Yep. Space that. You gotta space those. Yep. You must space those or you're gonna get jammed up there. Now the hard thing is to trill above it. And I've decided not to trill all the way through the dotted quarter tied to an eighth upstairs, but to do six. It's a little easier. Now it's hard to do this again. You have 
have a lot of lift to that or it can get really jammed in and tight and trenched. That's a good word. You don't want to get trenched. So you have to have that lift. The lift. Lift. The lift. The lift. flat in this, flat sounding. It has to always have a bounce and it has a direction and it has a shape. And you're springboarding into things like, yeah, now he's in D major. Yeah, up, up, down, up, up, down. That's what's happening next. Okay, now that's a dominant there. That's A major. Now that could either be the dominant of D major or the dominant of D minor. What he does is he goes into D minor right here. Uh, he's going to go into the harmonic minor. You're going to hear the harmonic minor. Uh, there's the C sharp from the. And he starts on the C sharp here, and he's in the D minor harmonic, starting on the seventh note. It's with repeated notes. The second time, dominant at that juncture at the double bar and you're coming back to tonic so that's a very nice effect if we can lighten the weight from the dominant arpeggio going down broken chord to the tonic that returns from the beginning now if we go forward to the double bar and we end up with exactly a repeat of the first section. Let's see where it's different. Here it's different. It's going into E minor. All E minor. There's the dominant of E minor. So much that you might want to do two measures a little bigger and two measures a little softer with those trills. It sounds too much like a robot. And that's the nuances of dominant tonic. And this was now in G minor. 
minor, E minor. to be big at the end so it wouldn't be petering out at the very end yep. 